Sean. What? This is the cold open. Or I guess Wait, it's not a cold no, no. open. I guess it's not a cold open. It's you a, there is a theme. Allowed to say this is the cold open. Well, just so you know that this hours. is what we're doing. So, Sean. The hours I've watched of Saturday Night Live. Sweet Lord Michaels presenting his lovely well, product to us, the American audience. I have never seen Will Ferrell turn to camera and tell us all, Sherry O'Terry, this is the cold open. I feel like the one after 9-11, they said, this is the cold open. <laughs> okay, that's the one time. And then yep. they probably did a somber uh, musical guest. You know, it's like Don Pardo's like shedding a tear thinking about those towers. But... Musical guest, I'm crying. Musical <laughs> guest, a television set showing you the bombing. No, I guess it wasn't. No, it's wow. bombings, guys. It's bombings. Wow. Yeah. You also bombing this cold open. Okay, so James. Sean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was, or I mean, there is a movie called Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, and a quick pl rundown of it, Jesus Christ needs to protect lesbians from vampires, and he recruits world-famous professional wrestler Santos. Bon Jovi. Oh, never mind. So... During this movie, it's Jesus and Santos fighting vampires to protect the lesbian community. What year Santos are we getting? Oh, well, this is this is an unofficial Santos. This is oh. 2001. So, this is Santos with three S's. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it's okay. not, but it's, it's portrayed as Santos. We did it for this movie's gay because of, mm -hmm. you know, the lesbians. And it, it's a batshit <laughs> movie. It's a writer director team. It is Lee the Farley Brothers. No, ew. It is <laughs> Lee DeMarbre and Ian Driscoll. Okay. I looked into their other movies. Okay. And they got a movie called The Dead Sleep Easy, Sean. Off the top of my head, it sounds like kind of just a fun, real pulpy kind uh -huh. of like, you know. Like, like a grindhouse, like it, something oh, you get to the drive-in. Yeah. It is. So it's a Mexican okay. wrestler entangled with the mob seeks revenge after a group of Mexican migrants are massacred in a human smuggling ring. Okay. And there's a, the, the lead actor yeah, is the what, champ. That's what I'm waiting for. It's the champ, Jonathan. John Cena? No, Ian Hodgkinson, a.k.a. Vampiro. Vampiro, baby. Oh, we got another one to watch. Oh, my God. Oh, tell. So we just recorded. This is a day after. I don't know how they release of the Patreon, straight to Patreon, the Vampiro movie. Uh, Sean, technically a day after yesterday, we released oh, the perfect. Vampiro. Oh, yeah. I forgot we do this immediately. Yeah. And so if you if you heard that. You know how Nicole felt about the last Vampiro movie, but I really think we're going to win her back with this one. Well, she enjoyed, from my knowledge, or from what she saw of it, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ Vampire Hunter, which my brother and sister-in-law fucking love that movie without me even telling them about it like this is they watched it independently and we were talking about like crazy movies to watch and my brother's like oh there's this one you probably haven't seen it called jesus christ vampire hunter and i'm like dude we did that for this movie's <laughs> gay i've definitely heard of that movie i've not seen it but like it's definitely out of all those like sort of fun schlocky type of type of film cinemas like that's definitely it's definitely out there. It's definitely like uh, it's definitely beloved. Mm hmm. Yo, so let's see what the fuck that. I just can't wait to see Vampiro some more. Just like these sweet sweet listeners can't wait to hear about Sweaty Times Pro Wrestling. Sean, you get it wrong every time. It's Sweaty Time. I change it every time, baby. No, you don't. No, I am it's not changed. Effervescent and liquid like the sea. Effervescence oh. isn't what. Welcome to the podcast, a podcast for old wrestling fans and new wrestling fans and fans who just want to get down to sounds. Da oh, okay. This I was like, down to sounds? What? Are no, we are sounds. No. We're waveforms moving in them goddamn ears. Mm -hmm. We're what, this is uh, me and James watching through season one of Lucha Underground. Los Lucha Underground, the faceless heroes. 
And if you're new to this podcast, welcome on in. If you're an old school wrestling fan, that's awesome. So am I. I've been a big time fan for way too much of my life. And if you're here to just clown with the sound, you came to the right place. Hell yeah. We got new fans. We got old fans. We got big fans. We got small fans. We got Ooh. box fans. We got circle fans. Oh, damn. We got box cutters. Oh, baby. And you're about to box cut up on some underground Fuck, I did not transition to this segment well, but we uh, we have a segment on this show. Box cutters will kill you and put you underground, and we're about to unearth you, baby. That's, that's a transition. The this, that's the name of the segment, too. That's yeah. a good transition. Unearth the underground. Yeah, you need to get good at segments. We, I know. We need R2 no, Shelby 2 on because R2 is very good at transitions. Listen to the ROM complex or formulaic, you suck of bitches. Are you ready for unearth the underground? I am absolutely ready for Unearth the Underground. And this one needs to go quick because, Sean, we need to stop recording at four. Yeah, it's fair. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, Sean, uh, when did Lucha Underground come out? Uh, 2014. Okay, well, the year is 2015, and I'm prepping to go to a sold-out show at East Room here in Chicago on September 20th by myself because, ooh, baby, Nicole was like, I don't want to go to a punk rock show. Uh, the, the girl at the punk show. Remember when you said this had to go quickly? It was a punk rock show, as I said. <laughs> Headliner is now self-excommunicated, only to get out ahead of the lured by Burger Records movement of 2020. Ay, ay, ay. It sucks because that dude, he put out great music and got me through the best worst summer of 2013. Uh, but it's hard to listen knowing the shit he did. So fuck that dude. Yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But <laughs> yep, yep, yep. however, Jonathan, uh-huh. one great thing that came from that concert that remember how I said it was sold out? Uh, I think it was oversold because it was a goddamn sardine room. You've heard of a of a what kind of rooms can we have? You've heard sardine of sardine room. Yeah, you've heard of East Room? Well, this is a goddamn sardine room. <laughs> so The opening band (laughs) was called Paul Cherry, and they start out with a cover of Cherry Bomb. I could be wrong, though. No one challenged me on what came up in the set list and where. This uh, the lead singer had this like big puffy hair and dressed in a tailored suit covered in classic slot machine cherry icons or a Pac-Man cherries in a remastered update. They weren't like all eight bit. It wasn't that kind of retro guys. You could have also just said cherries. It's cherry bomb (laughs) like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sean, (laughs) the set is rocking. I'm already on board. But a couple songs in, a man who looks very much like the lead singer comes from a side door that is on the stage that leads outside. He waltzes on stage and gets into a fight over the mic with the lead singer. The wait. The lead singer from the last band. No, no, the the lead singer from Paul Cherry. All of a sudden, a man who looks kind of like this lead singer walks on stage and starts getting into a fight. So this outdoorsman who, who just came from this outdoors thing, he boots the lead singer off stage, demands the music stop, then shouts to the band, I'm paraphrasing, of course. I don't have this great of memory. I'm not Mary Lou Henner. Says, what the fuck? I'm walking down the street only to see on the marquee of the East Room, insert headliner here, featuring Paul Cherry. And I'm thinking, I didn't know I had a show tonight because I'm Paul Cherry. <laughs> what? And I come the- on to see my band playing with an imposter. What in the wide world of evil clones is this fucking concept? He says, but since I'm here and all, let's get to rock and then puts out a fucking show. It it was like a bit like they started it with this person who looked very much like him. And then Paul Cherry comes on and I've been a fan ever since. Like I was instantly hooked. It was amazing. Uh, I fell in love. And I ran home, technically hopped on the 50, went north from Wicker Park and just kept going to wherever my old apartment was. Mm, that's just, I love 
I like. I also love how you can definitely you can see where that bit started. Like that. <coughs> like that was definitely a. This dude looks like me. All right, let's figure something out. Like that came first. Mm-hmm. Discovering that hey, you kind of look like me definitely comes first. And then everything else. Unless it was his like brother, then it's like, hey, let's just do this. I, maybe it was his brother. You never found out exactly. I never found out, but I I did email him. To be like, hey, new fan that I, I should have read the email, but I was mainly looking to see what date that event was. It was just like, hey, saw you back in September. This is in November. And I was like, hey, fi- oh, and this is when I finally bought on top on Bandcamp. It's great start to finish. You have a really nice sound and looking forward to more. And then I was going to see him live, specifically him. And that's why. And then, like, I talked to him afterwards. He said, dude, thank you so much for this email. It really made my day. And I've I've had a few of those emails to John Clark Bailey Jr. I sent one after finding his stuff, uh, Wage Slaves, at Quimby. And then he Mm. eventually, he's the one who did the cover art for King Kaiser X. Nice. I think it's another is Mar- the Marty and Sarah podcast. Marty and Sarah love wrestling. Uh, great podcast. But I'm, I think they they had like I won't say like a full on like mo- like like promotion or whatever. But they had this thing going for a long time where it do it. It'd always just be like, hey, reminder: if you feel like reaching out to an artist or performer or just someone you enjoy, feel free to because usually it's people like to hear nice things, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we all get like wrapped up in our own things so often. Yeah, like. Yeah, reaching out and just be like, hey, uh, I saw you the other night. You were really great. Mm -hmm, It's mm -hmm. like the coolest, nicest, best thing to ever wake up to. Yeah, if you see someone bring out like their email address and say like, hey, send me something. Go for it. As long as it's not a backhanded compliment or a negative thing. If you're just like, I fucking love you. You're good. Yeah, Yeah, that's going to make our days. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things like, obviously, use your brain, you big old dumb dumbs. Mm-hmm. That's why we're not Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. We're fucking edgy. But it's so... If you if you have the time and, and you feel the, the move to, like, sometimes you see a wrestler for the first time, you go check out their Twitter, you, you want to slide into those DMs. Hey, I never saw you before. I can't wait to see you again. You were phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I love what you do. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really nice. But Sean, back to Paul Cherry. Yes, please. On top, it was released in 2014 by Field Trip Records here in Chicagoland, Illinois. It's a six-track EP digitally, that is. But if you own the cassette like I do, which I believe I got from Bric-a-Brac, like I saw it at Bric-a-Brac, I already owned the digital. I was like, I got to buy this, which I did for, uh, eventually we'll, we'll talk about another person later on who did music videos for this person. But, ooh, foreshadowing. This cassette has three more songs on it. it you'll also get chelsea the jealous type parenthetical is the jealous type an outro and a song called breadstick ballad dedicated to olive garden that came from a back and forth twitter interaction between paul cherry and the garden that ended with him creating this song and receiving a swag bag directly from olive garden corporate do you hear that, Madison Square Garden? You are no longer the garden. Uh-huh, uh-huh. James has taken that title away from yeah. MSG and given it to the one, the only, all. And you're here, your family. Yeah. It's the OG garden, the Olive Garden. Absolutely. I'll fucking, if you, if you meet me at an Olive Garden, I will die for you because uh-huh. you are my family uh-huh. and I uh, don't understand boundaries. Olive Garden is so good, guys. Go there, eat fresh, eat family. James, is it real apparent that I'm coming straight off of a meeting I was not prepared for? No. I feel like I got, I got, I got loose energy. I got like a real like prolapse anus real loose butthole energy well you got i was already gonna say this before you started going scatological but uh i mean you didn't go scatological i was you said you got loose energy i got loose stool okay oh you know what all right let's go back all right this podcast is back on track back on my (laughs) podcast that's a riff on a later paul cherry song but this ep has a great collection of both upbeat tracks and mellow lounge type songs that would end up being focus like his focus on later albums but i highly recommend this and the others quick recs on this are 
Everybody's Burning Out, Hey There Brother, and The Addicts. However, listening to Paul Cherry turned me on to the directors of his and the producers of his music videos who were done by alt-pop mainstays Dorian Electra and Westo Allen. Check their shit out, guys, especially our musical ode to the clitoris. It is so fucking good. <laughs> the clitoris, it's my anatomy. It's so fucking good. Check out Dorian Electra. Their visuals are so fucking good, guys. Now, James. What's up? Uh, the clitoris. Yeah. That real? Oh yeah, it was mapped digitally, and it's 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 four times the size that you would have thought it was. It goes uh, inside. It's it's so huge. The clitoris. I don't know. The, the problem. The problem is, I, if I start believing in the clitoris, like what? I'm not gonna be able to believe in Jesus next. Get out of here. No, Jesus was a big proponent for the clitoris. What? Hold yeah. on. Jesus ate out so much. Holy shit. That's why he was always on his knees. He wasn't washing feet. That was like, he would show like feet being scrubbed, but really he was munching down on some clit. Yeah, just like we're munching down on some great fucking wrestling this week. Oh, and Sean, you know how like people say like do the alphabet. This is a real quick thing. Uh -huh. Jesus would um, do like ancient runes to bless their vagina. <laughs> I like that. It's not a miracle. He's performing. He's essentially performing like level seven wizardry in Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition. Yeah. I buy that. Wait. Oh, yeah. Ninth level. I was going to be like, does it go up to seventh level spells? But ninth, I know, is the biggest. Yeah, you fucking nerds. We know what we're talking about. Don't you come at me. Uh -huh. Don't you come. Don't you dare come at me unless we're in the Olive Garden, in which yeah. case you do whatever you need to do to my body. I will give everything for my family. Bust out the Coronas, baby. Yeah. I'm Diesel AF. I'll cast a ninth level blight on your ass. I'm going to hang out with Ludacris. Dang, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, Fast and the Furious. Okay. Uh, did listen, you say Fast I'm and the Furious? I think I referenced family and Coronas. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I'm not saying it wasn't a leap. Uh, and that's the end of that. <laughs> it was a big old. <laughs> it was a big old leap. You want to know what else is a big old leap? Fucking Phoenix, baby. That beautiful high flying bastard. Or Johnny Mundo from that when he jumped from the ropes onto the ladder. Yeah, or, or Super Frogger. <laughs> but one of these things was not in the episode. I guess he does little leaps. He does little leaps. Little Frogger's leaps of little faith. Leaper. Or a leap. Frogger Frogger believes in Jesus. Oh, my yeah. God. Remember when Seinfeld did the Frogger? Yep. God. And thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> I just close it here. That's the podcast. <laughs> we ask you one thing. Maybe you remember this. Remember when they were like, hey, it's 10 cents. It's only five cents in New York. So let's use, uh, let's f do two federal crimes. Yep. In Thank Seinfeld? you for listening to Sweaty Times Pro Wrestling. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's Sweaty Times Pro Seinfeld. Oh my God. You're pro we Seinfeld, I hear. Oh, I've always been pro Seinfeld. Uh-huh. I mean, because he didn't have sex with the teenage girl he dated while she was in high school and he was 30-something. Isn't that cool that he got to date a high school girl and was still fucking Seinfeld? I hate, I hate comedy. I really do. I hate everything. I hate comedy. I hate pop culture. I hate burger records. I hate, I, I hate everything except the Olive Garden. Thank you to the Olive Garden, the OG Garden... Fuck Madison Square. Fuck the Knicks. Fuck WrestleMania. It's all about the temple, baby. Yeah, you're you are pro Jerry Seinfeld. I'm pro Orny Adams. <laughs> How's he doing? I don't know. I guess he uh, he's best known for his role as coach Bobby Finstock on the MTV series Teen Wolf. He finally got out of the shadow of of that dude. Of the the documentary comedian, yeah, that was ah uh, that was, that was one of those ones. I remember seeing that at, uh, when I was in high school and being like so like oh my god comedy the world of comedy I love comedy, but I never like really thought to go back and like I feel like they buried Orny Adams like probably unfairly. 
No, no, I mean the community at large did. I remember him being on probably Sklar <gasps> Bro Country talking about it of the documentary made him kind of a like secondary focus. He didn't want to be, like he didn't ask for that. But people were like, oh, why are they? T-? It's it's like fucking people with Halloween ends. Hey, guys, possible Halloween end spoilers. Skip forward. Do you care if I spoil Halloween ends? I do not plan on seeing this film. Okay, so it is an exploration of generational. Yes. That's okay. That's better. Of generational uh, woes and evil, pretty much. It's Mm -hmm. showing like evil can be passed down. And people are like, I can't believe it got supernatural in here. Fucking the first movie is supernatural. I don't care how strong you assholes are. If you get shot like five times and stabbed multiple times, you've been running in a jumpsuit all goddamn night. You are going to die when you fall off from a two story banister. I don't care. It's supernatural. Oh, my God. He, and then. Oh, the boogeyman. Is he dead? He is the boogeyman. It's supernatural. So. Them say so like (laughs) in this new movie, people would have been pissed if Mike Myers didn't die in the end. They would have been like, I thought it ends. But now they're pissed because he does die in the end. But oh, we only saw him for like 7% of the movie and he's a weak man. Yes, he's 70 some years old. Of course, he's going to be weak because then, oh, if he was strong and overpowerful, like, oh, I don't know. Halloween fucking kills. Oh, he's a 70 year old man. Oh, why is he so strong? A seven? Oh, I, I know my dad. He's pretty strong and he can beat up other dads at 72, but he'd never be able to murder 20 people when there's an entire riot. And it's still supernatural in that movie because people shot him with a shotgun point blank and then beat him with pipes and he's still living. And of course he's going to be weak. He's been in a sewer sleeping on cement for three years. So... Yeah. He gets evil. (laughs) Like this other person named Corey who like they kill a kid right in the beginning. And Nicole, we joked. We were like, oh, like it would be like really funny or like, oh, like a big fuck you to people who didn't like Halloween kills. They start it right away with killing a child. That's how it starts. So it's an accident. This kid is then like branded as a monster for accidentally killing this child. So He he... Okay, uh, he walk hard. He Dewey Cox walk hard. His, uh, yes. I'm assuming it's his brother or something. No, no, okay. he's this kid Corey. He's like 20 or like a late teen, early 20s. Accidentally kills someone. He's babysitting, but this this little shit had it coming because he locked Corey in this uh, attic space, and he's like, "Open up, open up!" So he like kicks the door down, and the door hits the kid. He falls off like a thir- like the third floor. Also, like it's kind of the house's fault. Okay, this is house third story. Okay, it really goes to prove there's such a fine line between Dewey Cox. Yeah. And Michael Myers. Uh huh. So this this kid ends up like getting dragged into the sewer by Michael Myers and he tries to leave. And Michael Myers like tries to choke him out. But like they meet in the each other's eyes and like a transference of evil happens. OK, they're trading Pokemon cards, but those Pokemon cards are unwanted thoughts. Yes. So great. Then the entire movie is about him kind of taking this legacy and killing the people in the town that kind of deserve it. Like they're assholes and have done him wrong and his eyes are dying and he's clearly becoming another boogeyman. And that's the, so like people are pissed that like Orny Adams, that it's the Corey story and not Mike Myers. Dude, Mike Myers should die. And that's this Halloween ends is now my, it's my favorite Halloween movie. Out of like all 13? of the Halloween movies, yeah, they're oh man, I interesting. I've seen them all, baby. I almost want to see it. It's so good. The problem is, I don't want to see it, and then I have to look you in the eyes, understanding you. You think this is better than Season of the Witch? I I will say, Silver Shamrock is a banger. Nicole watched it with me, and she agreed. Not that it's the best one, but agrees. Like this movie rocks. My sister 
also mm-hmm. agrees it rocks and agrees because I'm like, who does this main character look like? And I'm like, holy shit, this looks like my brother. Then I messaged my sister. I was like, you got to watch this movie. The lead actor is our brother. And then she messaged me back saying, hey, this movie one is gnarly and holy shit, this dude is our brother. Then there was, I, mean, I heard about this. I saw this in the news. There was a screening and your brother was walking by. And for whatever reason, the movie screen was like, you could see the movie screen from the window uh-huh. and your brother gets real pissed. He walks onto this, into the theater, doesn't pay for a ticket, walks up to the screen, punches the screen out. Uh-huh. And just probably like, I walked by and I saw my <laughs> name on the marquee. <laughs> this is crazy. Here's a song about a clitoris. Yeah. it's a, Okay. Let's get into Lucha Underground. Okay. <laughs> I know we've gone off the rails when my ta- when I drop a tangent and even James is like, hold on, we got to get this back on uh, track. No, I, I loved the callback. Sharna is bowing right now. Sharna, you piece of trash. I just found out <laughs> I.O. is coming back. Whoa, I don't really? know how much I can talk. I don't know how much I can talk about. I'm sure it's somewhat public, but yeah, sh- no Sharna. That's good. That's great. Yeah, I have a friend who's uh, working with them to bring it back. It's Matt Besser. Yep, my, my dear friend Matt Besser. I'm excited. No, it's exciting. Yeah, if you're in Chicago, support IO. There's no more Sharna. And if you're a Sharna helper, the fuck are you doing listening to this podcast? Hey, no, no, no. Keep listening. Just don't That's message true. us. Just keep Please. listening. Please. Listen from multiple devices as well. And hopefully you have multiple iPhones with different Apple accounts. Uh, put reviews, five stars on all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you listen to this and review this five. St- fuck, James, what's going on? Oh, today we're watching episode seven, season one of Lucha Underground, entitled like Up in the Ladders. Top of the Ladder. Do you call it uh, Upping the Ladders? No, Up in the Ladders. Oh, okay. Close. Yeah. Top of the Ladder is the name of the episode. Top of the Ladder to you. And top of the Ladder to you, laddie. There is no no dark matches this week. We just get the recap. Good. Uh, This newer, darker Chavo is kind of sexy as hell. He's been hot in this entire thing. He's, dude, Chavo's fucking can get it. It's insane how much of a jobber ass he is in WWE in the like late 20, like late 2000s, 20, early 2010s. I should just take that entire sentence over again, but I'm not (laughs) editing any of it. Who gives a shit? (laughs) Especially when you realize Chavo was, um, was part of the SmackDown 6. Are you familiar with that at all? Yes. Yeah. Like this is, and I guess a quick rundown, if you're not, uh, when SmackDown, uh, when Paul Heyman took over creatively on the SmackDown show, which was the secondary Smackdown. WWE show, the idea was that he had six great wrestlers who really didn't get a big shot before that he was going to put over. Here are, here are six guys who should be top stars, pretty How? much. And they all are. Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Edge, Rey Mysterio, and Chavo Guerrero was the Ooh. sixth member of the SmackDown. Like... They were putting a lot of their eggs in the Chavo basket. But even in WCW. I'll drink some stinky eggs in his basket. Hey, yo. God, him and his stinky asshole. Out of my cloaca, not my asshole. Thank you. All praise cloacism. (laughs) I bow. Uh, Thank you. I know we we heard. Uh, Yeah, I don't know if people can hear a bow. They can hear a smile, but they (laughs) don't know if we can hear a bow. But uh, Chavo and WCW, even I want to make sure. Sorry, I want to make sure I make this point though. Was always a great hand, like a great worker. One of those guys you could put in a ring with anyone. Like that's the thing. Not just that he looks good, but you could put him in a ring with anyone, mm-hmm. and he's gonna pull a good match out of you. He's a great. He's a great eager hand. He's a very eager hand with fun character stuff. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen Chavo Guerrero ride around the ring on a, like a, like one of those pony sticks. You, you know, it's like a stick and you put a horse head on it. Okay. And you pretend you're riding a horse. I thought you were just mispronouncing pogo stick. No, you know, like, <laughs> oh, like, like a pogo stick, but there's no po and there's more D. No, okay. It's a pogo stick, no go, add and Y. Yes, York, you baby. already said that. Okay. No, I said po. I fucked it up the first time and then I fixed it because I'm great. But like Chavo was like Chavo was always kind of just like, I guess you could say in some ways a little bit oh, a lot of people shadow because obviously not just Eddie, but like Ray uh, and the entire like Billy Kidman in that uh, cruiserweight division. But like always a very it's so cool. And it's so cool to see like post WWE Chavo to really like anywhere he goes. It's always a smaller it's always a smaller sort of federation or a smaller business. But Chavo's fucking great. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, yeah, we can afford to like really push Chavo. He's 
He's such a piece of shit. It's phenomenal. Yeah. He's a great heel. And they be in the first two episodes, he's a great baby face. People want to cheer for Chavo, too. Even in this one, they were cheering for him. Oh, yeah. We'll get to... Yeah. In the Chavo match, people fucking love them some Chavo. Sean, can I say something real Piece quick? Piece of trash, please. In our reoccurring bits, I was like, what does Soa King mean? I was like, why did I write down Soa King? And I was like, oh, So King. <laughs> I forgot that that was part of it. But also, Sean, is yeah. is the is a wrestling ring the biggest snare drum in the world? It's either that or Paul Bunyan's. Okay. Depends. Uh, and it depends where you go. Like, I know World of Sports has a smaller ring. British style has a smaller ring. But usually, yes, it is the largest snare drum in the world. Why do you ask? Oh, it's just uh, when people slam on it, it sounds like a drum. Looks kind of yeah, like I one, too. I would never accuse you of having a high idea, but knowing how you take notes and how you occasionally get yourself a little zooted sometimes for media, I might ac- I might accuse you of being high when you wrote that down. Uh, no, I was very sober. I watched this in the morning. I lost that bet then. Shit. They're going to break my leg. They're going to break my legs at the Olive Garden. Have you never w- listened to Mostly Speak and Sentai? Most of the things seem like high ideas, but I'm <laughs> stone sober. This is very true. I think that was my first impression when I first met you was, this dude's crazy. Let's he, go. He tokes that herb. That guy uh, smokes marijuana. Yeah. Uh, and I'm smoking this fucking card. Yes. So uh, the first match, we're seeing like the briefcase is above them the entire time. Yeah. And it would have uh, been very funny if, like, the direction they took with this episode is it's Phoenix and Superfly. Uh, King Cuerdo and Superfly is the go. first match. It would have yeah. been funny if Superfly just, like, somehow, like, jumped real good, grabbed the briefcase, and ran away with it. That would have been, ah, uh, It's one of those things, I get why, the, that, that'd be a lot to add to all these matches, and in a way that no one else gets the briefcase it might like make everyone else look bad if they were trying to go for it Mm -hmm. that all being said yo that would have been a fucking awesome b line like a like a b plot to this entire running like listen it's up there if you could you still need to win your match but if you could also grab the briefcase before your match ends like i can't stop you our main event's fucked but you just made 100k or they team up it's King Cuerno and Superfly. King Cuerno puts on his his antlered deer hat, then jumps yep. on the shoulders of Superfly, and then with the antlers kind of like undoes the rope that's tied <laughs> onto the briefcase. It drops down, and they run, and it becomes like a, I'm hunting Cuerno. <laughs> they, they have to get another hunter to hunt the hunted. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. I would have loved that. Or even like if it's just. <coughs> oh my Get gosh, it. I'm dying. I'm so sorry. We're all or, technically dying. <laughs> this is true. Or fucking Danny Trejo, who yeah. is in this episode. I I'm I sorry. only have one note about him, and that's in the Chavo match. So we'll I'll get to my thoughts. Okay, and I should say I'm sorry. It's not Danny Trejo. Machete is in the crowd tonight. Uh-huh. They cut to him. He's in the front row. He and like this is you see it in WWE too. Someone has something to promote. Oh look, it's the guys from Riverdale. Uh, that show's coming on. You know, see whatever, whatever. You can catch it, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. The problem. They never say when the movie's coming out. Maybe it's already out. They don't really talk much about the movie, but they only refer to him as Machete. Uh, I feel like that came out in like 2009. That's not true. 2010. What the fuck are we doing he's here? Just, no, he's just a celebrity in the crowd. No, he's... Danny Trejo is a celebrity. They do say this Danny is, Trejo, and then they... Yes, they do, and then they say Machete himself. Okay, because I feel like I've only heard them call him Machete. No. <laughs> they call him Machete. They may have called... They, I think they might call... Then they, they probably call him Danny Trejo once... Yeah. And then they refer to Machete like five times throughout the show. Or maybe you're too busy being like, oh, wonder what Dan Miltzer has to say about this match. Dan Miltzer is more like it. He reviews dairy. Oh, he does? Dan Miltzer? Yeah. Okay. Metz Milzer, Meltzler. What's his what's this Chud's name? 
I don't know what you're talking about. Oh I'm just my a big, god. I'm trying to get on the good side of Dan Milk, sir, so that when my secret uh, milkshake recipe comes out, I get it. I get that golden five star review. The secret is is juice. And I use different. I use juice. See, I use breast milk in my shakes. Gross. Yep. Ew. What? No. Never. Blah. Blah. Alicia no. Silverstone hooks me up, and I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Or wait, is Alicia yeah. Silverstone selling breast milk? She is a very big vegan and proponent of. Th- th- she was trying to sell breast milk ice cream, but had issues with it because you can't ship it because it's technically in quotes like bio hazardous, not hazardous, but like it's bio waste or something it was hard to ship so it kind of put a damper in it and real quick on alicia silverstone watch vamps guys it's so good and it's so cartoonish they they use rats instead of eating humans they they use rats as capri suns they they, like just poke a (laughs) a a straw straw, in it yeah. yeah it's very funny Oh man, I'm I can't believe I've never heard of that movie. I must have been real clueless. Uh-huh. Boom, ska boom, ska boom, ska boom. Written by the same Amy Heckling. Nice. Wait, who who also wrote Clueless? She yeah. wrote Vamps? Yep. Nice. Clueless is a real Clueless is like a solid flick, man. I feel like every time I come back to that, I expect it to not be to not hold up. Mm-hmm. And it always holds up a little bit better than I thought it would. So it, I described Vamps as Amy Heckerling could have just done uh, like Sex in the City version of Clueless because it's like, oh, this is how old Alicia Silverstone is now. This is what she would be doing in New York. But instead, she's like, all right, we'll do something like that. But they're vampires. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we came to see. Thank uh-huh. you very much. Oh, my gosh. Uh but yeah, not too much to get into. They kind of they get straight into the match on this one. They do explain Superfly, Superfly, and I think Vampiro says or Striker says anyone can learn. Do your research. Yeah, Mad Striker kind of mentions that uh, Superfly one. I didn't write it down, and I immediately was like, I should go back and write that down. It was a mask v match. I think it was Super Ka- uh, Callow. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Super Callow is going to be real sad to hear you say that. No, the match doesn't matter. Like, what did he say? No, yeah, he said uh, it was a mask v. mask match. Uh, a mask wager. The loser of the mask, usually as two luchadors, must take off their mask and lose their identity. And it's very sad. There was a, a recent one with uh, uh, Villano and Penta. Pentagon Jr. just had one at uh, the last AAA show. PGJ. It's always and it's always a big crazy deal because like yeah it's, it's the it's literally the end of an era for you, uh, but that is to say yeah Superfly I, uh, looks like he began around two thousand one, stayed mostly around AAA uh, and and uh, Mexico, but like yeah so is in the business has been wrestling professionally for over ten years at this point, ogre ten years, okay okay uh, James I'm going to ask you to follow up on that you know like Shrek the mm-hmm. third the weight is ogre. <laughs> I've been waiting <laughs> ogre 10 years for Shrek 5. Give us Shrek, you cowards. God damn it. John Lithgow, you piece of shit. I'm sure it's his fault. I'm sure it's John Lithgow's fault. Yeah, he's trying to get back. At, he's trying to become the dark passenger in Decca's mind. He's like, hey, the dad can be it and Decca and sister can be it. Why can't the Trinity killer be it? Yeah, and then they're like, "John, we're talking about Shrek," and he's like, "I'm not." Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then we got and we got to sit down. We got to sit John Lethgow down uh, and brainwash him. He's like, "A uh, third rock from the sun." The Shrek series is a turd cock, ya hun. Yeah, he's like third rock from the sun. How about third cock on a nun? Ooh. I go into confessionals and I jerk off. <laughs> Dude, me three. Yeah. Oh, the Mighty man. Ducks. Quack, quack, quack. quack Ducks fly quack. together. I really did. Uh, I want to talk about, yeah, I've not seen Superfly before, though. I uh, This is my first time seeing him. I really enjoyed watching him. What did you th- uh, What did you think of the Cuerno-Superfly match? 
It's a short one. I liked it, and Drago's in the background looking menacing, but mm-hmm. is overshadowed by- Ogre shadow. Oh, there we go. Hey. By a teen girl behind him just nervously biting her fingernails during the match. Oh, I didn't see her. It looked at think- first like she was putting on uh, like chapstick, but no, she's like biting her cuticles. I wonder how much of that is also just like- Drago, and I love that this is the first, like, Cuerdo, I think at this point twice, has been sort of, like, stalking Dra- uh, Drago. Cuerdo would watch from the rafters. And now Drago's finally like, hey, fuck that shit. I could also stand up. I like I like that I like that twist. I like that uh, turnaround is fair play from Drago. What they should have had is him set up on a harness from the rafters, and he has, like, fake wings flapping to show that he's a dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In case we forgot he was a dragon. Yeah. I Yes, if I trusted the budget of this show to put up a, a safe harness. I would donate. Yeah, if, if they had a GoFundMe, then maybe. GoFundMe for dragon wings. Truly. I also love Vampiro kind of nails on commentary something I've been saying about uh, Santos Escobar, a.k.a. Uh, El- King Cuerno for a while now, which uh, he when he just when uh, he says he like caught up with him backstage and he emphasizes that Cuerno's Tope Suicida is like an arrow shot from hell. Everything he does, he does to hurt his opponents. And again, it's just I love how how good he is at really like every move, not just performing the moves, but having every movement of his body sort of play into the story of his character this elite efficient hunter Mm -hmm. like he's not just doing he's not just doing topes because they're exciting and they're extravagant he's doing it because it's the most it's a direct path of flying his entire force into his opponent like all, all of his drop kicks and all of his knees he does so many running strikes because it's this direct shot into the opponent um there's even like a i think he he it's a back body drop and I, it's such a small thing, but he like, so like, yeah, your opponent runs at him. He like, he back body drops his opponent and then he leaves his arms in the air and just like, oh, I fucking love it. It's just, it's, it's so, he's so good at all those little things. In addition to the big things, mm-hmm. I'm really, I'm really feeling King Cuerno. And he wins, baby. Yep. Three minutes, uh, 58 seconds, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then- excuse me, 28. And then we get that promo for Pentagon. Yep. It's a Pentagon Junior package where we find out he was born in Mexico, traveled to Japan to further his training. Yeah. He was born in Mexico. Then they say he had to go east, far east, like Claremont East. Yeah. That's a joke for R2, and I think that's it. (laughs) Or people who live in Los Angeles. Matt Besser, my friend, will love that joke. He lives in East L.A.? I don't fucking know. I'm not that good friends with them. Okay, I thought you were like a huge improv for humans guy. They talk about I'm fucking Olive Garden for humans is the only allegiance I have to anything. They're cutting they're cutting this footage also with Pentagon training in his own personal dojo, it looks like, with uh, various sparring partners. They touch on how he had to embrace the dark arts to survive. It wasn't enough to just be skilled and learn the ways. He must also take those ways and meld them to his own style mm-hmm. to create his own uh, unique brand of brutality. Ooh, brutality and bloodshed for all, Gigi Allen style. Hey, 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 don't talk to me. No, no. Ooh, you've been listening to early shit. So yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, he's unaffiliated, this and that. And I was like, yeah, stay unaffiliated, guys. Don't get into collectives. Don't. Try to be a part of something. Stay alone, wolf. Prowl the night on your own. Until you get to Olive Garden. Because when you're here, you're family. And I ain't letting you leave unaffiliated. You're my family. Get in my car. Drink my Corona. We're going to go hang out with Ludacris. No. Go to Olive Garden. What? Ask for a booth in the corner to eat by yourself. And bring your own velvet rope. Can't be done. You go to a booth, you eat by yourself. You you just look up for a second. For a second, you look down your delicious spaghetti. You look up. There is a delicious love lovely old woman out over on the other side of the booth and she is telling you stories of when you were a baby and you pooped yourself and everybody laughed when you're here your family 
Damn, I'm going to start going there and screaming, oh, my God, you were in Halloween ends. Because <laughs> your brother. It was your brother. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But one thing I love about this show, I have two notes on it, is that because of this, the the matches don't meander at all. They're like, they feel like they have a start and a finish, and you would never see the middle of it. Like, it's all intended to be there they're not wasting time they're giving you this spectacle which is awesome and i think this is i from the other wrestling i have experienced this might be the perfect introductory wrestling series to show someone yeah i absolutely agree uh because it is because like a lot of these guys are established triple a guys but they're not established in america Mm -hmm. so they're they're, they are, like, taking the time to kind of walk you through everyone. No one... There are no sort of, like, real deep, like, oh, who is this guy? You can tune in without knowing anyone. They fill you in real well. It is a... Everyone is very athletic and very gifted and are also really great at telling the story. Not just doing the moves. Like, oh, my... The, when we get to the ladder match, I think... Bo- I mean, because Mondo, Mondo is probably the most experienced out of all of them. So I assume he put together a lot of those spots, but they tell such a good story. Yeah. Not just exciting. Like, it, in addition to being like, hey, I don't, there's a lot of story. I don't really, I didn't really get it, but it looked real fucking cool. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. That's also there. Like, it really, that's why I wanted to do this for this podcast was Lucha Underground. I really, mm-hmm. I believe that as well. This is, it's so easy to kind of pick up and they do a great job. Like the the Pentagon Junior package. Uh, to to go back to that, they really spend the time focusing on how it's not that he's like bad; it's that he had he learned how to survive. His fighting style was learning how to survive, and yeah. sometimes learning how to survive is being a little brutal to your t- sparring partners or teaming up with a Shavo, that sexy bastard. Yeah, some, like you, some, you just gotta do what you gotta do. There might be an issue with, like, this being an introduction of you might never be able to find this high again. It's like when we started Super Sentai, we started with Die Ranger. Don't do that, guys, because Die Ranger fucking rips. And it's very hard, like, in all facets of the monster design, there's actual character development with everyone. They all have their own individual story arcs as well as an overarching story arc that – Trying to find something that equals that or even comes close will be hard. So maybe watch other stuff and then come into this. I don't think this is the best wrestling. I think this is actually the best for introducing of like what is like kind of what can wrestling be. And admittedly, like, yeah, you might like because not everything has been amazing so far. Oh, I think it has. Matt Stryker can suck 10 penises. Well, I know I'm saying wrestling. Even wrestling wise, like there's been a few like uh, okay, okay moments. Even but like like I don't know. I'm I just want to I just want an excuse to go back and watch early TNA like pre Hogan TNA because I think that's also some phenomenal wrestling. Okay, with well, phenomenal stories. As you said yesterday, or uh, on uh, straight to Patreon, straight you to wanted Patreon. Nicole to come on this show because it's great to see someone who hasn't been watching wrestling for a long time to get their take on stuff so maybe yeah. right now you're just being someone who has watched a lot of wrestling i might be yeah to say like this is not my favorite like it's it's great but like i'm all, also like here's the thing and maybe you maybe you'll watch this and you'll be like oh i like wrestling let me check out some other stuff and maybe you'll be like hey i think i just like this either way is fine i still recommend you start with this i'll say this is the best sober wrestling to watch like glow fucking rips when you're stoned that's fair i still i'm still gonna say dude you have not seen some of that pre-hogan tna all right it's fucking great there's a there's a boy who was a shark who went into a coma and woke up and he thought he was stone cold steve austin they put that on television all right that's some shit i want to see yeah yeah give me your shell yeah because he's a shark so he says shell yeah that's turtles dude fuck Pentagon Jr. is working with Chavo Guerrero now, and it's very sad. I also, it is so funny they gave him this backstory. I, I looked into it. I don't think Pentagon had been in Japan at all yet. And the origin, I was curious, like, are you familiar with the origin of the Pentagon mask? No. So Pentagon essentially came out, uh, was, like, debuted 
to be the evil twin of Octagon. Pentagon Jr., the man behind the mask today, came back. Like, they, And there have been like several, several variations of Pentagon. I think that, and Octagon. I think at some point there's a Lady Octagon and a Lady Pentagon as well. I believe there are because you can play them on this uh, AAA game. Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. And so the Octagon Jr. comes out and they're like, shit, we need a new Pentagon Jr., I, f- I forget who he is. The, the wrestler behind Octagon Jr. had a great, has a phenomenal career. Oh, it's Samurai Del Sol. Excuse me. But it's so funny to see, like, and then Pentagon Jr., who still wears the Pentagon mask. Uh, he goes by Penta El Cerro Mierdo now because it, AAA owns Pentagon Jr. But he's wearing the same mask just to see, like, how far he's come, like, from, like, yeah, you would never, if you didn't know he was an evil twin of Octagon Jr., you would have never guessed it. Mm-hmm. it's venom to spider-man where like yeah. venom came out to be like oh yeah he's like the anti-spider-man and then like everyone just loves like he very quickly sort of creates his own identity yeah and pentagon yeah is the venom in this case and of course speaking of pentagon jr and his look vampiro loves the loves the aesthetic who looks the most like a juggalo of course he does vampiro has been down with the clown since for Vampiro, I heard every time he sports a tent in his pants, aka a boner, that's the carnival carnage. That's what that's where it is. It's in Vampiro's boners. Yeah. So, you know, respect that. Vampiro got that thick hog, guys. Check him out in Vampiro Warrior of the Night. What a movie. Chavo Guerrero Jr. with Pentagon Jr. versus Phoenix with Sexy Star is the next match on the card. Yeah. Hey, uh- not the best Phoenix match, but it's a Phoenix match and a Chavo match, so it's fucking great. Damn, that when Phoenix jumps off to get Chavo and Chavo just jumps and does like a standing drop kick. Oh man, it's so yeah. good. Yeah, it's that entire like the, like closing finish is beautiful. And off from the bat, it's in stereo. Truly, like it's one side of the auditorium and the other side one screaming let's go chavo the other screaming let's go phoenix you can hear it in stereo and yeah. i wish they had cut to danny trejo to see who he was rooting for Ooh, that's a i didn't even think to ask that's a great question we uh, if anyone knows yeah. danny trejo ask him who was he phoenix rooting or for chavo yeah don't even just ask him phoenix or chavo i'm and guessing know. chavo I'm guessing Phoenix. Ooh. I think. I think. I don't know. I just feel like he might have, be, like, he might be friends with Chavo. Who? And I feel like everyone wants to be friends with Phoenix because he's cool and he's sexy and he does dope shit. Oh. There's so many just, like, the match is beautiful. They tell a great story. It's Chavo, again, again Chavo and all around her, but in Lucha Underground, really focusing on grounding out his opponents. Uh, and Phoenix is kind of untouchable in the air. He's Princess Peach in Smash Brothers Melee. The dude's got aerials. Areolas, too, like Peach. Great nips on this uh, Phoenix here. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to think, I, there was just so many. Do, uh, the Meteora, uh, Phoenix jumps off the top with double knees. And like it's supposed to be like two knees to the shoulder of the opponent from the air. Chavo rolls through grabs a leg and turns it into a half Boston crab, like a single leg Boston crab. Yeah, and I he's just like, like yo, what the fuck? Spreading that cloaca wide on him. Huge cloaca opening. This it's like whole match is just fuck, it's weird to I, I get why I get why Penta and Sexy are here. That's really the the real story is kind of between Penta and Phoenix and Sexy and Chavo. Uh, they didn't really do a lot. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of there. They do mess with, you know, like Pentagon uh, messes with the stage. And of course, like, oh, right. Sexy star is like, oh, over there. And then the ref's like, what are you talking about? So, and then that's when Chavo's able to get the jump on him. But yeah. and Pentagon is leads directly to the finish of the match. Yeah. The reason Chavo wins spoilers is because Pentagon interferes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'll rephrase. I don't know why sexy star is here, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> After winning, Vampiro's like, yeah, you want to know what? Good on Chavo. And Matt Stryker's saying, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, Phoenix was being arrogant. He was showing off, trying to display his power. But Chavo took his opportunity. Like, I'll be taking my opportunity when Chavo isn't looking at that duffel bag of his. Take an absolute dump in that turd's bag. Do you trust Vamp? I would say I don't think I trust Vampiro to like when he breaks that down. Uh, to, to say Phoenix has been arrogant, 
I don't know if I trust Vampiro that Phoenix is being arrogant. I think anytime a newer person kind of comes in, there is a common thread of like veteran entitlement where like, oh, you're the newer guy. I've been here for years. You have to look up to me. I wouldn't say arrogant. Vampiro would. I don't think he used those words. What I think he was trying to get across was Phoenix had openings to pin and take down Chavo, but he wanted to make a display of like, I am stronger than you. You are mm-hmm. old hat. Get out of here. Which is also part of, but that's which is also part of Phoenix's style is to no. I know what my finisher is. I will. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pin you until I hit my finish. Let's just, what he is doing is just soaking in the match. He is not thrusting. No, nope. he is leaving. <laughs> In case you're wondering, like, they're not talking about that soaking. We absolutely are talking uh-huh. about that soaking. And if you're wondering, what is that soaking? Listen to the last episode. Just don't Google it, please. You don't want that. Porn hub it. Yeah, this match was fun. Um, I also love, just like the one last spot I fucking loved. Uh, they go, Chavo goes for the monkey flip. And instead, Phoenix tur- catches him, puts Chavo on the top rope. And you think like, oh, wow, it's going to be a superplex or something crazy. Feet, he jumps on the top rope and just kicks Chavo in the head. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. He just super kicks the fuck out of Chavo on the top rope. I've never seen it before. I loved it. I love this match. Uh, Chavo wins. Chavo wins. Actually, right after that move, that's when uh, Chavo falls down. Phoenix climbs to the top rope. Sexy. I don't know what she's talking to the referee about. I don't know why she's on the apron, but she gets on the apron and distracts the referee so Penta can dump off Phoenix, which sets up Chavo for his frog splash and the dub at 5 minutes 43 seconds. Post-match, Sexy Star is not done with Chavo because she says, Chavo, I'm not done with you. Oh. Blue Demon is coming. She's, she's just saying, she never says Blue Demon, she just says he's coming. He's coming back for Chavo, you pendejo, and it's very cool. I can't wait to see Blue Demon Jr. I can't wait to see Brian Cage as well, which is the next part of the show. Sean. Yes, James. Cage is not strong because he works out. No. He is not quick because he runs fast. Mm-mm. He wins simply because he wants it more. What? <laughs> He doesn't explain why he's fast. He doesn't explain why he's no. strong. He says why he's not. But then he's just like, and I win because I simply want it more. He, yeah, it's... I don't think there's anything wrong with this character of... I'm not special. I don't have superpowers. I think that's the big thing is like, I don't have... Because we're kind of seeing bits and pieces of superhero... Or superpowers, sort of supernatural things are happening in the temple... So to be the character that's like, I don't have anything supernatural. I'm just a guy who really wants it and works hard for it. But conceptually, I'm fine with that. Actual structurally, anytime you start off anything, like a, like a public speaking appearance, you start off with a bunch of negatives is weak. Yeah, this like if that sentence I just said, which is verbatim, if that yeah. were a Jeopardy clue, people would be like... I- what is uh, i don't be know because you don't say what it is you say what it's not yeah and if so like if he started off even if you just start off with i'm not a man i'm a machine tell us what you are yeah like this thing, if, 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 if we even get like one line of like something like i'm strong i want to win and then you go into like the i'm not a superhero i don't have super strength i don't have super speed i don't have optic eye lasers that i get from a portal from the sun dimension i don't have any like but tell it but who are you you still you have to open up with who are you as the hook so that i'll because i would go on the ride of and i'm not anything special i love blue collar i'm just a dude gimmicks I, I do. I think, I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin is the epitome of blue collar. I'm just a dude, right? John Moxley is doing something like that now. Wolverine, to an extent, as far as like when you like jump into superheroes, is a very blue collar. I'm kind of just a guy. He does have abilities, but like at the end, of, but like who Wolverine is, he's kind of just a guy. This can work, but it's just like structurally. Yeah. He says an incomplete statement. That is what this promo is. Just a run-on incomplete statement. 
Yeah. He gets better, I bet. Oh, we'll but see. <laughs> Sean, at this time, they said, hey, it's our main event. I was like, wow, I must be have this went by fast. And then I looked and I said, oh, no, there's what do you mean? there's yeah. 26 minutes left. Uh Oh, I was just talking about how matches don't meander. They like they feel fast. So I was scared for this match. Oh, baby birds but, and all the sweet baby birds going into this. Don't be afeard. Don't be afeard. Don't be afeard. <laughs> let, 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 the, let the beautiful warriors of the temple take you by the hand and lead you down a beautiful primrose path of violence. But guys, this match fucking ripped. Big Rick versus Johnny Mundo versus Prince Puma with Conan for a hundred thousand dollars in a briefcase above the ring ladder match style, baby. I th- I think the next episode is going to start this how I thought this was going to end, which is it's going to start with in the locker room. Johnny Mundo opens up the briefcase and it there's nothing. There's an IOU in there. It's just like to I feel like this was to get his key back. And that's how it was set up of like, hey, give me the key and then we're all set. Hey, hand the key, open it up. Holy shit, he got the key for nothing. I think there's not going to be anything in there. I think there will be because I think the money itself is the red herring, right? Like like if Dario, if Dario Cueto doesn't pay off, uh, does we kind of jumped the end. Dar- uh, Johnny Mundo, who's still holding the key for the insurance, the quote unquote insurance policy against Dario. He's holding his key. Uh, he wins the match. He gets. He finally gets his hundred k. He was promised from the beginning of the show. This all, but that this whole hundred k is the is a red herring. Like Dario doesn't really care about the money at all. He, he cares has about money. that key. He cares about that key. So like, if he doesn't, we'll see. If he doesn't pay Johnny the mon- the money. Johnny's still going to be hunting him for the key. Yeah, but he still the has one thing the he doesn't key. Want. No, he gives him the key back. Oh, he does? Yeah. The, uh, so the match ends. It's, uh, Dario comes out. It's fucking great. Uh, Johnny has a briefcase. And Dario's like, okay, great. You have your money. Now give me my key. And Johnny's I thought like, he just oh. punches him. No, no. He's like, there's this big thing of like, will he, won't he? He takes the key, puts it in the hand. And he does knock out Dario with like a loaded fist with the key in his hand. But he leaves the key on his chest when he oh, leaves okay. the ring. Yeah. Like, uh, I leave steamy dumps on the chest that is a duffel bag. Don't buy Chavo Guerrero, you sexy motherfucker. Like, I, which I, and I love that. I love that this whole that the 100K has been a distraction the whole time. It's not about the 100K at all. Dario's paying everyone. It's about this key and about the more sinister things that like, even the commentary team's like, what the fuck is that key? I want to know. I still don't think there's money in there. But what would that accomplish? I would hate that as a decision, I think. I, I think. And then like the, he's going to go try to steal the key. And uh oh, it's hidden now. Who's going to steal the key? Mundo's going to go back and try to steal the key, but he can't find it. Like it's no I longer would... around his neck. But then why wouldn't he pay him the 100 K? He doesn't want to spend money on these ads. Like, it's already been established. He does not want to spend money. And if you keep if I don't know if that's been established. Because now he doesn't now he doesn't have to pay Big Rick the the bonus. Because in that fine print, it was, hey, you need to win this match to get that. Now he doesn't need to, to pay that either. He's a scumball. He needs that for cocaine. He's it's never been about money. And I like it so much more because also this storyline is not about the money. So for us, for him to not get it, it keeps that story open when it really there's nowhere else for this story to go. The 100K storyline. There's a lot of places for the key storyline to go. And I do. And we should be focusing. We should be shifting focus onto the key. And by leaving the 100 and leaving the 100K open, we don't get to put as much focus on the key. I think this will then set out motion of, okay, now I'm all about the key. Who Fuck getting my money back. I'm going to take what you really want, this key now, and then that'll set off motions for that. And we could do that so much cleaner if we close the, if we close the money storyline. I think they're going to do it beautifully. There's going to be no money in there, and then Sean's going to weep gonna crocodile be tears. Because so, you're putting... You're, there is such a problem with like long storylines, like movies, TV shows, wrestling, comics, 
of just of just like keeping things open for the sake of keeping something open when it de- when at that point it detracts like yeah. if, if 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 you're telling a long story with a lot of moving parts you need to be very you need to clarify your focus when you want to focus on something yeah and let's clarify our focus right now to this match and let's finish this up because okay, we yeah, yeah. have four minutes to do it this is a great match there's so many fucking beautiful spots it opens up Rick, Rick and John, Rick, Rick Johnny and uh, Puma. Yeah, uh, pretty early on. I th- I feel like almost immediately after Rick gets dumped out by Puma and uh, Johnny, he calls on Cisco and Cortez. So it's like this three on two match at times, mm-hmm. but not even really. It's three on one on one. It's and, and at first, like you tell me about that. This is a great. This should be. This could be an amazing Puma and uh, Johnny match. Just one v one ladder. Yeah. And then you put in Big Rick, who's like not really a ladder performer. He needs two of them. And and then you had these two guys. And you're like, oh, this is going to get. I was so afraid it was going to get too messy. And it was going to be like, no, it was handled, I think, beautifully. Uh-huh. Cortez, Cortez and Cisco come out pretty early. So you're not waiting. Like, that's the thing. If they had this beautiful match and they just kind of come out towards the end, which a lot of wrestling does, I feel like that would have felt cheap. It yeah. would have felt like we watched this beautiful match and then like, oh, I guess everything we saw didn't matter because here comes Cisco. And that's not what they do though. They come out pretty early and are involved in the entire match. Like the, and they don't really, they're not great at what they do, which is awesome because like they're heels and we're really excited. Like they're putting the rocket on Puma and Johnny. So for them to like, just keep overwhelming these three dudes, is fucking great. Uh, and they eat so many crazy fucking spots. They get the fucking tables, the ladders. It's I'm actually I'm trying I'm like scrolling down. I took I took too many notes, but there's so many beautiful spots on this fucking match. They dive through the the ladder Puma does. That was beautiful. Like in outside oh of the gosh. ring, that was yeah. dope. Yeah, I love Johnny on the outside climbs a ladder to put Cisco through a table. It's like all on the outside. Cisco's on the table. Johnny climbs up the ladder. Puma out of nowhere like springboards from the ropes oh no yeah springboards up onto the ropes so he's just standing on the top ropes like not in the corner just like on the top rope kind of balancing himself with the ladder and and it just pulls johnny off and guillotines him on the top rope it's fucking brutal Mm -hmm. we also need a term you know like dad bod you got like a gut a little bit hanging out from like your pants area if you have your shirt off we need a term for it's not a gut hanging it's muscle hanging because big rick has that it's just like hard muscle like yeah. muffin top and it's like dude you are ripped boy hell yeah stud muffin top. oh okay yeah there we go also we gotta talk about the buster the buster keaton spot is that the the oh ho, ho, dental work uh no, that is I think it's, I think it's a Buster Keaton movie. It might it, it might be a Charlie Chaplin, but I think it's Keaton. There is a famous there's a famous uh sort of moment in a in a, a silent film comedy history where they're putting together a house and the front of the house falls down. Mm. And I think it's Keaton who's just kind of like it should crush Keaton to death, but he's standing exactly where the window is. Yeah, so it just kind of falls around him. They do that with the ladder and Puma. And it's a fucking great. They straight up do. I've never, I've never seen this in a ladder match before. And I, whoever came up with that spot deserves a, a bonus on this spot immediately. That is so fucking cool. Johnny throws a ladder and Puma's just like, oh, and then he, oh, he's a little tramp and I love him. I'm sorry. The, we also see a lot of people's just like backs go straight onto these ladders. And like, obviously that hurts. And I, I figured out. A brilliant business idea. Rubber coated ladders. And this this solves a lot of shit. One, the 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 slippery the slippiness of it. I am always worried about slippy ladders. Uh, No, for real. Like walking up and just instead of having someone hold the ladder for it to like move and slip, if there's rubber on the bottom, that's going to grab cement much more than just metal at the bottom. Also yeah, maybe you're hanging up lights and it's rainy outside. Rubber isn't it's a, it's a, not a conductor. It's the opposite. You're not going to get electrocuted on top of a ladder now. 
And most importantly, when you're wrestling with your buddies, you're not going to get just, it's still going to hurt a little, but it's not going to be jagged edge of metal. It's going to be a little bit of soft cushion plus metal of a, a guy. Like, you're not using a metal dildo most of the time. You're using like a silicone rubber outline on top of some metal. Yeah, by these ladders that James is selling, and you can fuck yourself with the ladder. You do that too? You could do that. I fucking love this match. I there. I fucking love this match. I fucking love this match. Spe- uh, yes. So, like, uh, th- speaking of this match, Sean, you mm. need to find a woman who will just talk trash to a man like Big Rick while she is in the crowd because there is a woman who's just like, Get, stay the fuck down, you piece of shit. And it's like, yeah, that's the kind of lady Seanathan needs. There's the dueling chance for Chavo and uh, Phoenix earlier. There is no dueling chance for this. Like, And they, and they are loud. This is a uh-huh. very this is a very loud crowd for how much they fucking hate Big which. Of course, you brought two dudes who were not in this match. Why? Are, who take? You can't get disqualified. Technically, they can climb the ladder for you, which yeah. he tries to get them to do a couple of times. I love that. Oh, I love that final spot where Big Rick's alone in the ring with his two goons, and he's playing defense while they climb the ladder. But Johnny is just too Johnny and fucking absolutely gets. The, also, can we talk about how Big Rick needs two ladders to climb? Yeah. And gets booted in the nuts for uh-huh. another spot I have never seen. I think it's, it's hard to say I've never seen them. I can't say no one has ever Buster Keaton their way through a ladder match before. But so, yeah, Big Rick's on two ladders. Johnny's kind of climbing them. And and I, and I, and I love it that it's not, he's not just sitting there waiting for him. Big Rick is trying to punch Johnny, but he just stays out of range. He just keeps, like, they're mm-hmm. still fighting for it. And I guess those spots are great, but it's also those little things in between that, like, tell the story. Yeah. And so what he does is, like, he can't get up to the ladder. Big Rick's reach is too long. He can't climb up, and he already has a a position of power. If he climbs any higher, he's going to get punched. So what he does is, Big Rick's, again, he's so big, he needs two ladders. Johnny kind of pulls them apart just enough Mm -hmm. to get that opening and takes him to Dick Kick City so fucking good. Yeah. Like, you made him do the splits on the ladder so you could kick him in the groin? What is this match? It's so fucking good. I wonder how much... It feels like a lot of this is Johnny. Because every... Mundo has always been a very... Well, what can we do that has not been seen before style performer? And this match has so many spots like that. Of just like, wow, yeah. We've seen a lot of people get put through a table. Never quite like that. Yeah. Or like... When the ladder is positioned on the ring a little bit and on a table a little bit and Big Rick, a tall ass man, like straight armed at above him is holding Prince Puma and just uh, props on his accuracy, throws him onto this ladder and it just breaks right in half. Yeah, pro- absolute. Like lands beautifully. And it's so... It's- you see some of these matches, sometimes the objects don't break when they should. It breaks so clean. It breaks so... It, it, it's a beautiful broken ladder spot. This match is fucking... This is a really... Understa- like, knowing like knowing Big Rick was in the match and knowing Castro and Cisco were going to get involved, I also had reservations. Like, I was okay with being like, oh, yeah, it's 20 minutes, it's a ladder match. Like, I'll give it time to breathe. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta do that. But I was worried about, like, all the interference... It was done so well. This match is so good. You also, in the crowd, as you're seeing it, there's a corner that is clearly like, hey, this is the wrestling internet corner because it is all white dudes with flannels on, beanies, and beards. Like That not, could just be the Los Angeles corner. Uh, well, uh, yes, but like it, that's clearly like one area full of them. And then there was this dude who looked like he was drunk, just like when Johnny Mundo was punching the shit out of someone, and it was right in, right on the ground floor. And this dude was like, yeah, "Oh yeah!" It was fucking great. And then my last note is. Vampiro's talking about like, yeah, man, it doesn't matter like how many Twitter followers you have, this, that, like, you, it, 
it matters how well you are in the ring. And he says, it doesn't matter how over your podcast is. Sean, we have an in. It doesn't matter we don't get a lot of listens. Yeah. Vampiro, guess what? You doomed yourself to be on this goddamn you show. Stupid motherfucker, Vampiro. Uh-huh. You played yourself without you played yourself back in 2014 without even realizing it. Yep. Now you gotta answer my dumb questions about your clitoris. No. Vampiro, get on here. We're going to ask him how much was cut from that movie. Yeah. And and I'm going to I want to ask him I I, I want to ask him about his clitoris. I do have another note that says socks and then in quotations, check this out. I don't know what socks was telling me to oh, I think socks like started like jumping around and shit and I was like, "Oh, socks is seeing this wrestling stuff." Like he saw us watching Super Sentai, and then him and Butter started beating the shit out of each other. Fucking hey, your cats are crazy. This match is crazy. This night's crazy. Everything's crazy in a beautiful men- meld of chaos. Sean, stop moving in your chair. Every time you do, there is a noise. Yeah, fuck you. So that was the match. That was the episode. Oh, this is sweaty time pro wrestling. It's fucking. It's a podcast. Vampiro, we're gonna get your ass on here. You son yeah. of a bitch. I love you. We're gonna have you talk about uh, don't sl- the dead sleep soon or whatever it's called. And Vampiro Night Warrior. Guys, check it out on Amazon Prime. Then go over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where if you sign up for $10, you'll be able to listen to our discussion of that. Nicole's on it, too. It's a it's straight to Patreon, some of the funniest stuff we're doing. And it's behind not just a paywall, but the highest tiered paywall you can get. So check that out. But a lot of other funny stuff over on patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get new podcasts every single Friday. The Akiba Ranger episode we just put out very, very fun. Funny. The Death from Above with Presley, super funny. Great stuff over there. And if you're a $10 patron, you get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those, starting with Steve F., Eric Berry, that of Ranger looks Command. Just like me. That oh. dude- Oh, no, no, we're not doing this bit this week? Okay. Uh, no, no, we don't have time. Eric Berry okay. of Ranger Command Power Hour. Alex Z, the Waz. Orion, he's a rapper. Defo, D hyphen F O. Kayla, aka Two Grapes. Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. My Bickle, my brother in common law. Joshua Jakus, or I mean Joshua Jakus. Steve Barnes of Sweet Child of Time. Go to listen to that podcast, ya uh, mother bitches. And speaking of mothers, oh my God, it's my mom. And then finally, Lil Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. Also, check Sean out on this week's episode of formulaic where he's playing shaggy rogers or twitch.tv slash goose vk i that the person who said that was me hi i'm sean and that was james and we've been sweaty Sweaty time time pro Pro wrestling. wrestling johnny's gonna be pink blood for a week see you mother bitches bye